contestant for tonight is Tyler Johnson. Johansson. Johansson. Yeah! Uh, his title of his speech is Living a Legacy. Let's welcome A man steps out onto the 400 meter track. In front of him is the delegation from Suriname. Behind him, the delegation from Switzerland. Around him is a sea of people applauding, clapping, cheering with excitement, welcoming, welcoming him to Rome. The year is 1960. The man is a cyclist named Oswald. He's donning a blue and yellow tracksuit as he takes those steps around that track. Taking in the sights and sounds around him, knowing that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. He follows that flag of his beloved country as he completes his walk around the circle. He comes to the end and the flame is lit. And the 1960 Summer Olympics in Rome, Italy, have begun. He's trained his entire life for this day. He knows that he's at his peak performance. But will it be good enough? The day comes, and he gets on his bike, gets into the saddle, and starts pedaling. He pedals as hard as he can. Four hours later, he crosses the finish line, but in disappointment. Because he hasn't achieved a gold medal. He's finished in 47th place, one minute and one second behind the leader. And he thinks, what legacy am I leaving here? What honor am I bringing to my family, my name, and to my country now? But thousands of miles back in Stockholm, Sweden, since a four-year-old boy, a proud four-year-old boy, who's excited that his father even had the opportunity to compete in the Olympic Games. Nine years later, that little boy takes his first ride on a set of water skis. And that spark, that feeling that the cyclist had, he feels too. And he talks to his father about being a competitor and being a world-class athlete. And his father gives him advice to be the very best that he can be. And 10 years later, that boy skis in the World Championships in Toronto, Canada in 1979. He also leaves with disappointment. He didn't win, doesn't win a gold medal. He gets 10th place. And he goes back to Sweden thinking, what will be my legacy? What will be the honor that I, that I bring? To sum up the stories that I just told you, I'm going to read you a poem. It's called The Bridge Builder. An old man going along the highway came at the evening, cold and gray, to a chasm fast and deep and wide, through which was flowing a sullen tide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim, the sullen stream had no fear. But he turned when safe on the other side, and built a, a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you are wasting your strength with building here. Your journey will end at the ending day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed this chasm, vast and deep and wide. Why build you, build you this bridge at even tide? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, in the path I have come, he said, there followed, after a, there followed after me a youth today whose feet must pass this way. This chasm that has been not for me to that fair-haired youth 
may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I am building this bridge for him. The old, the old Oswald, the Swedish cyclist, may not have won a gold medal, may not be in the record books uh, of the, Olymp the Summer Olympics from 1960, but he left his legacy in his son. And his son competed in the World Championships in Toronto, Canada, 19 years later. And he, then too, continued that legacy. He continued that legacy when he came to the United States for the first time. And he continued that legacy as a father to his own son. And today, I stand in front of you as a father and grandson of those two men, determined to find what my legacy will be. I'm not going to be an Olympic athlete or a world-class water skier at 24, but I'm determined to find out what my legacy will be here in this world that we live in. And that's my hope, is to determine what can I leave for the next person to follow me? What can I leave for my son?